Wally West has taken over as the Flash as Barry Allen is traveling through the multiverse with the Justice League Incarnate. But as he is now the new Flash, doesn't that mean that he has to go on other adventures that involve his son, his daughter, his wife, and various villains? Welcome to where reality meets fiction, where your stories are read back to you in a dramatic fashion, where I get to pretend to be a voice actor. This is Comic Storian, and we take the time to make you a comic book expert by filling you in on the big moments happening within the world of comics. We do cut out B-plots, limit our panel usage, and this allows us to prevent copyright problems and allow you to have something to read to yourself if you so choose to. I do recommend going to your local comic book store and starting your own collection, or you can use one of our sponsors, Shortboxed. Click the link down below to learn how you can win a graded comic book for yourself and discover the world of collectible comics. Today we're going to be covering Flash, issues 774 and 775. In the dead of night, across Central City, there's a man who stalks the shadows of people's homes, waiting for them to fall asleep. With him, a helmet. That once somebody fell asleep, he'd be able to extract the dark creatures that lie within their subconsciousness. He is Dr. Nightmare. And your nightmares are his army. But across town, Wally West is facing a different kind of nightmare. Taking I. Ray to her first father-daughter dance at the school. As Linda finishes setting Wally's tie, she tells him not to worry. It's not that big of a deal. And Wally says that this isn't just a dance, it's their first dance. And then it'll be their second, and then she'll be dating, and she'll be married, and she'll never come home and see us. Jai tells him that he needs to relax. But then I. Ray tells him that she's ready, and comes down the stairs. She asks how does she look, and while Wally stutters over his words, Linda tells her that she looks great. Now get together for a picture. After taking a dozen photos, Wally and I. Ray head off to school when the two notice a rather thick fog as they pass by Wally's work. Wally yawns, stating that he hopes that there's some coffee. He's starting to feel tired for some reason, and I. Ray tells him that it's just because he's old. But once they get to I. Ray's school, they find everyone inside knocked out and sleeping. After making sure everyone's alive, Wally says that they need to get back home and check on Mom and Jai. And as the two get ready to run, they just stand in place. Iray says that her powers aren't working. She can feel them, but she's just too tired to use them. Wally and Iray quickly get back into the car to head back home, but with everyone falling asleep, traffic is at a standstill. And Iray asks if she's dreaming because there's a man riding a giant purple elephant running through the streets. Iray gets out of the car with Wally shouting, What are you doing? And she says that he always told her that being a superhero isn't about powers. And he did want to teach her and Jaya about superheroing. Isn't this what he'd call a learning experience? Wally groans, telling her to remind him not to be such a good dad. She can come, but if he tells her to run or hide, she has to listen. Meanwhile, inside of Terrific Tech, Dr. Nightmare laughs as he begins to open up the vaults, stating that there are some scary innovations in this location. He expected to find something better from the so-called smartest man. They all said bringing dreams to life was dangerous and foolish, and they were right. Dreams are easy, boring. Instead, this little device will aggravate the fear center of your brain. And with some molecular reconstruction fluid, I found something even better. Nightmares! <laughs> As he begins to rip open the vaults, Wally and Iris sneak in, with Iris quickly running over to grab the helmet of one of the sleeping guards. When Dr. Nightmare notices, Iris sticks out her tongue and Wally grabs her by the hand, telling her to run. But Dr. Nightmare begins to throw out more of his nightmares, shouting, No one will escape! Wally manages to stay ahead just enough to duck into a closet, stating that, lucky for them, the creatures aren't that smart. Should be enough to let him call in the league and... But Iray tells him that there's no time. Maybe they can use the helmet to create something that can beat up the nightmares. Wally says it is too dangerous, but Iray asks, isn't that a part of being a superhero? Didn't you say that your new motto was, West always save the day? Wally asks, when did she get so brave? And she tells him, by watching you, dad. A few moments later, Dr. Nightmare is outside of the closet yelling, There's no use in hiding! Come out now and I'll make your end painless! Wally shouts that they'll be right out, and then he tosses out some of Iray's dream orbs, creating a rather adorable army with a giant donut panda and a two-headed rabbit. While the dreams take down the nightmares, Dr. Nightmare begins to escape, but Wally catches up punching him. Sweet dreams, Doctor! And with that, Dr. Nightmare is taken in by the police. Iray asks if this means that she gets to have her costume back. Maybe a superhero name? And Wally says that that means that they get to go back home. It's way past your bedtime. She asks him what about the dance, and Wally tells her, actually, 
Our powers are returning, so... Within seconds, the two are dancing in Paris when Iray sees a shooting star. Wally tells her to make a wish, and she hugs her father, telling him that it already came true. But what they didn't realize was that that was no ordinary shooting star. It was a glaive, and it crash-landed in the middle of Central City. A bit later, Wally West, Superman, and Mr. Terrific are all standing around the glaive that landed in Central City. Flash and Mr. Terrific watch as Superman has trouble moving it. The two tell him that it's magical in origin, but Superman keeps trying to grunt, telling them, All right, all right, I'm gonna get it, don't worry. Wally laughs, patting Superman on the back. I can't wait to tell the others that there's something that even Superman can't move. As Superman snaps back, I will get it, Wally! A moment later, he stops. Sorry. For whatever reason, that really frustrated me. Mr. Terrific scans the glaive, stating that this thing is putting off some peculiar readings. I'll have to get back to the lab and analyze them. Wally jokes, telling him that he's supposed to be the smartest man around. And Mr. Terrific tells him that he is doubting that after hiring someone who is here instead of at their job. Flash begins to tell him, but I thought I could be... Flash is stunned as Mr. Terrific told him to be Flash whenever he needed to be. I, I thought you said that I could... And Mr. Terrific stops him. You should get back to work. And Superman flies off. I can't be stuck here taking care of another city. Wally scratches his head. Those two were kind of rude. I probably should get back to work. So he races back to Terrific Tech, where he finds Marcy, Thomas, and Steven all arguing over a project that they're working on. As Marcy charges at Stevie, Wally asks what the heck is going on, and Marcy yells that this bubblegum-chewing knucklehead says that the Crystalline Shield is a stupid waste of time and money. Stevie shouts, That's because what Cranky Pants doesn't understand is that it's theoretical! Temporal energy isn't going to be radioactive, and there's no reason to use it! But then everyone turns their attention to Wally, stating, Wait, where have you been? We've all been here for hours working, and you just now show up? Just then, Wally's responder beeps, and he tells them that it's not, uh... Listen, we'll pick up on this later. Try not to kill each other while I'm gone, okay? Wally hurries back downtown where the responder told him that there was trouble. But as he gets there, he's shocked and he trips. Mr. Terrific looking down, telling him, I thought I told you to get back to work. But Wally asks him what's going on. Mr. Terrific attacks again, telling him, Something that I should have done a long time ago, and that is stopping the great Wally West. You are too powerful at being to even exist. Maybe even more powerful than Superman. There is a 65% chance that you will destroy the world at some point, so come along quietly and recognize that your sacrifice will save countless lives. Wally jumps back to his feet. Um, sorry, but uh, Linda might have a problem with that, Mr. Terrific. He charges at Mr. Terrific, but his T-spheres create a shield blocking him. And Mr. Terrific says, there's no way in. Just give up now. <laughs> I have one more trick, though. And he begins to spin drilling into the ground under the lasers and out the other side, knocking Mr. Terrific out. Just then, Trickster of all people jumps at the glaive, telling him, I can feel the hate this thing is giving off. I can. Wally jumps in, punching him back. How the heck does Trickster move something that Superman can't? Just then, there's more shouting, and the whole rogues gallery of villains begin to pour in, all trying to take their shot and pulling up the glaive. While everyone begins to pull at the handle, Wally readies himself, stating, I haven't gone bowling in a while, and he crashes into everyone. One by one, Wally begins to stop each of the villains, and even after dealing with those, he looks back, noticing everyone on the streets is fighting and arguing. He then looks back at the glaive. This thing is giving off that energy. Maybe I can vibrate it loose. As he begins to try, though, the entire city begins to shake, and one of the people yells that this jerk is doing it. He has started the earthquake. So not only was Superman, Mr. Terrific, and all of the villains seemingly off, but also the people around the city who are just getting angry. Running out of options, Wally hurries back to Terrific Tech to grab some of Marcy's crystalline shielding and begins to lock in the glaive's energy, and suddenly everyone begins to regain themselves as it's blocked. The villains all yell that they are going to be back after they figure out why they were there in the first place. And as everything begins to return back to normal, Wally sees that the shielding is beginning to crack. Okay, that's probably not good. As quickly as the shield shatters, all of Central City falls back into a state of anger, with everyone yelling at one another for the smallest thing. Wally sits back up asking, Wait, did I just make things worse? And then he notices that something else rocketed down from the sky towards the glaive. 
After crashing into the ground, a purple man appears. I felt its call from across the cosmos. Its delectable essence reaching out like a beacon of hate, waiting to be consumed. I, Starbreaker, will do just that. Wally gets up seeing the alien being now here to also join the fight. Come on! If he eats that thing, he's probably gonna get really powerful, right? Starbreaker turns back to him. Yes. Wally turns back to Starbreaker. All right, well, I guess I gotta stop you. He rushes in, hitting Starbreaker to the ground, with Starbreaker laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! Fool! I am an energy vampire. Those kinetic attacks, along with the hate wafting through the air, it's making me stronger. You should have known better. Wally smiles. Honestly, after a while, all you bad guys start to blend together. He rushes back in again, but Starbreaker grabs him by the throat, tossing him. Bear witness to the end of the world! As he pulls out the glaive. As Starbreaker is pulling at the handle, the energy begins to flow around him until suddenly the blade breaks free. Ha! It is mine! And with it, the whole universe is... No, wait! Release me, I beg of you! The glaive begins to release a black energy swallowing Starbreaker, and as the energy fades, he stands there infected, staring at Wally. He tosses the glaive as a strange voice comes out of him. I am finally free. They thought they could contain me, but now I will have my revenge. The whole cosmos will bow before the might of Eclipso. Wally gets up clapping. <laughs> yeah, okay. It all makes sense now. The anger, the vengeance. You use that thing like bait on a hook, hoping to reel in someone stupid enough and powerful enough for you to take over. Eclipso tells him, I didn't need someone powerful. I just needed someone who thirsts for power. The Kryptonian, though, infected with my anger wouldn't let me in, so I called on others. The question remains, how did you ignore the call? Yeah, I just don't go for the anger thing. If you wanted someone, you should have landed in Gotham. Anyway, ready to get your butt handed to you? Eclipso radiates the power. No, no. You are beneath me now, and time is of the essence. Look to the heavens, for when I return, I will come with vengeance. As he begins to fly away, Wally watches. I'm gonna take that as a win! And at that moment, a green onk appears, and Wally asks, Is that you, Dr. Fate? A hand reaches out of the portal and pulls Wally in, and on the other side, Dr. Fate tells him, Flash, the fate of the universe rests in your hands. Wally asks, My hands? Well, I gotta say, those aren't my best features. And Dr. Fate sighs. And there you have it. Now we're on an adventure with Dr. Fate. Eventually, we're going to run into an adventure with Kid Flash, and it's going to tie into Dark Crisis, so I hope you're excited about that. Make sure you check back next Sunday for the next chapter of this storyline that I'm going to be reading to you guys. Every Sunday, we're going to do The Flash to catch you up on Wally West while we're doing things like Beyond the White Knight, Batman Beyond, the Batman storyline, Dark Crisis. We're going to be covering some Superman. We got Evil Dead coming out. We got more Berserker. We got all kinds of crazy stuff happening right here at Comic Story. And so make sure you like, subscribe, and stick around as every morning you're going to find a new complete story here. We're going to give you your audio dramas of your favorite books all the time. And if you want early access to them, go join us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash comicstorian. Thank you guys for your time, and I'll see you next time right here.